Voltmeter. When you select volts or millivolts, the meter will be in the auto ranging mode and it will default to DC. Do not change to manual range. The most accurate readings will always be in the auto range mode. To change from DC to AC or back to DC, press the select button once. In the voltage modes, the meter reading will fluctuate around when the leads are not touching or when you're not connected to voltage. This is normal. This is called ghost voltage. The meter is not defective. The black meter lead will always be in the center, COM, or common port. For voltage readings, the red or positive probe is inserted into the leftmost port. This lead will remain in these two ports for all readings other than amperage. The voltmeter is the most important function on the 485. When I teach diagnostics, I teach a voltmeter only method because there are some significant flaws to the ohm meter and the amp meter is a little bit harder to use in certain circumstances. So the voltmeter is the tool that you're going to want to be using more than any other tool. There are a couple of things about the voltmeter you need to know uh, when you start to use it. First of all, there are a couple of different readings that you may not be familiar with. The first one is called ghost voltage. Ghost voltage is when the meter fluctuates and jumps around and it actually looks like it's broken or out of calibration, but it's not. Ghost voltage is an indication of an open circuit. So when you see it, you don't worry about what may or may not be wrong with the circuit or what may or may not be broken on the meter. You simply say, I have an open. So when you're reading voltage, if you see ghost voltage, then the immediate indication is that you have an open circuit and that's the name of the fault and that's what you need to go look for. Additionally, the meter will also show straight zero voltages or true zero voltage. True zero voltage is an indication of, an, of a short to ground. So a short to ground is going to show up as straight zeros when you're trying to read voltage. Okay? The most important thing to understand is you're not trying to predict an answer, you're simply knowing the answer. So going out to a vehicle or going out to measure voltage thinking that you have to try to predict the answer beforehand is a mistake. You simply turn the circuit on. When the circuit is energized, you simply unhook the connection to the load you're trying to test, the motor or the light or the solenoid or the, or the whatever, and you simply read voltage with both leads in the connector. Do not put the black lead to ground first. Always put the black lead into the connector with the positive po uh, probe of the meter because when you do that it means you're checking the entire loop of the entire circuit. This is how you're able to know immediately whether or not the circuit has a fault without having to go back and do additional testing. When you use the 485 with the load pro voltmeter leads, this gives you the opportunity to find the third fault which is high resistance. All you would do is simply read voltage as you normally would. If you see system voltage, it means you do not have an open or short. That's what it means. Open circuit cannot allow you to see voltage. If you have an open, you won't see voltage. If you have a short to ground, you won't see voltage. So when you see system voltage, it means you have no opens and no shorts in the circuit as long as you're testing at the end of the circuit with the load component removed and the circuit turned on. Okay. Then you simply load the circuit with the load pro. And if there is a fault in the circuit caused by high resistance or corrosion, then what you'll see is you'll see the voltage drop. And when the voltage drops, that means that there is some other type of fault in the wiring and you need to inspect the wiring before you go out there and you uh, start changing parts. So a couple of things about the voltmeter you need to know before uh, you go out there and use it. First of all, it's a little different than most meters because under normal circumstances what I'm used to is the voltage port being on the right and on this meter it's on the left. So you just need to be cautious that you remember that when you're setting up the meter the voltage port is on the left and not the right. The amp ports uh, for, the, uh, for the amp meter connections are on the, on the right which is actually backwards from what I'm used to but it really doesn't matter it's just a different design feature. So make sure you're in the proper port for volts when you're trying to measure voltage. 
Another, uh, another uh, consideration is that you have a separate millivolt scale. So at times when you're trying to measure the voltage drops across fuses or make other small measurements, you might have to actually flip from the voltage to the millivolt setting. The meter defaults to DC volts, and if you want to flip to AC, then you simply press the select button, which moves you from DC to AC and back. This is also true for the uh, volt. This is true for the voltage and the millivolt settings. The voltmeter is completely safe. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't turn the circuit on. It's got very, very high internal resistance. So when you're using the voltmeter, you can be very confident that you don't have to worry about where you put it in the circuit um, because really no matter where you put it, it isn't going to cause any major problems. The ohm meter and the amp meter are not the same. The ohm meter and the amp meter can actually create problems for you when you try to measure things with them because if the circuit is not disconnected, the ohm meter will fail. And if you don't remember that you're turning things on with the amp meter, somebody can get hurt. So it's important to make sure you know which meter you're using, how it works, and where you are in the circuit before you start doing any testing. Again, the voltmeter is going to be the most important meter you use. It should be the meter you use first, and it should be the meter that you use the most. And if you use it properly and can understand how to use ghost and zero and voltage drops from the load pro, then the voltmeter is going to prove to be an exceptionally good tool for you when you're out there trying to diagnose faults in the world. Okay, now when you're reading voltage, it's important to understand that uh, the voltmeter is a pressure gauge. So uh, it's going to read the pressure relative to ground. So if you put the black lead on ground, then we assume the ground is zero. So whatever the number we read, uh, we're reading the pressure relative to the ground. Okay, so ground will be zero. And then 14.79 volts. That's not 14 and it's not 15, it's 14.79. Okay, do not round up, do not round down. This meter, the 485, is very, uh, very, very accurate, so, especially with the calibration feature in it. So make sure that you always read the exact number because that helps you with diagnostics. There's a difference between 1479 and 1469. That's, there's a difference. Okay? So on the voltage scale, if we hit the range button, which I recommend you do not do, You'll notice that we lose the auto feature, but then we get the 14.8. Now we get 14. Now we're going to get OL because we're trying to read on a scale that's too low. So then we come back up one. We're at 14.79 again to get back to the auto range feature. You hold it for about two to three seconds, and it comes back on auto. The voltmeter is the safest meter to use. Um, because you don't have to disconnect anything, it doesn't turn things on, and all it does is read pressure. Okay, so that's important. Then, if you go up to millivolts, we're just going to read OL here because we're reading 15, 14.79 uh, volts. So we're overloading the the range. The millivolt scale is not big enough to read that. It doesn't hurt the meter. There's no danger to it. It's not a problem. It just is telling you that the number you're trying to read which is 14.79, is too big or it overloads or is outside the limit of the millivolt range. So that's really all that means.